Hey everybody, welcome back to Bonsai Tortoise. Today we are doing fall prep. Still basically empty. We have a quarter of corn here and there, another one in there. And we have a box turtles there and our spotted turtle back there. But uh, for the most part, everything's empty. Everything you see in the greenhouse, besides all these clippings that I haven't cleaned up yet, sorry about that. Uh, this is actually volunteers, so whenever we feed pumpkins and squash, they always pop up in the in the red foot enclosure. So in here we have a nasty male red foot who decided to wallow in the mud this morning in his enclosure. So he's uh, slowly getting acclimated to our group. Our turtle pond here, which has no turtles in it, uh, is going good. The bog filter is going good. We have more than enough water hyacinth to go around and we're putting more water plants in there so it gets that bog really turning over well. But the only thing living in there right now is some gambusian guppies. Spotted a turtle back there. Probably won't be able to find him. Likes to hide. So uh, yeah, everything's going good. There's a Hermes tortoise in here she's sleeping in there she's in quarantine so yeah all is good the juvenile tortoises are out and about we have our hermans in there with the marginated the red foots in there greeks in there all these plants i'm starting to clip them back and uh get them ready for winter uh but they'll be out here for probably another month at least until the fall kicks in them and all the other bonsais on the other side of the yard. But today, today's project is that lumber right there. We are gonna make cold frames for our Greek tortoises, like Ham right there. Love Ham, she's awesome. And our Hermes tortoises. And they're in here somewhere. Oh, there's one. There she is. That's actually a male, not her. So we're gonna make one cold frame here for the Hermans and one on the other side right here for the Greeks. Um, so that'll act as their shelter as well. So I'll get rid of that doghouse, which I really don't like to be honest. So typically we bring our Testudo in to the greenhouse and on the greenhouse floor, it's relatively cool. So um, the Greeks actually, they'll brew me for a month or two at a time. Uh, the Hermans will slow down a bit, but the Hermans haven't gone through a true brumation yet, at least with me. Uh, so uh, we're going to try it out here with cold frames. A lot of folks across the country use cold frames. Uh, where we're located, our winters aren't so extreme. We do have extreme winters from time to time. Um, last year's winter, we had about a month of extreme weather. Uh, but the winter before that, the average high was around in the 50s. So, you know, it kind of depends on uh, Mother Nature and how she wants to feel that day. But we're going to remain in cold frames. They're going to go up right here. Another one right here and uh we'll keep an eye on them they'll have sealed lids so they'll be protected from the elements uh the only thing i'll worry about is the temperature so um yeah we'll see what happens ham's excited can't you tell yep she got a smirk on her face so as we go through our fall prep season or winter prep uh you know we, we keep an eye on these little juveniles these testudo in here so they the marginated that's actually herman's that's a marginated that's a Hermans. So they're together in one stall here. We have our Iberia Greek in here. Um, so they're, they're rock solid, they're fine. Uh, the Redfoots, uh, these guys can take it too. We have a few juveniles in here. There's actually four. Uh, one is last year's hatchling and the other are, you know, about three years old, give or take. Uh, but they can take the cold weather as well. Not cold extremes, but they can handle it. So, but I do keep an eye on them a little bit more then I keep an eye on these guys, just to make sure I'm monitoring them and make sure they're okay. Because the nights have gone down to the 50s, uh, which, you know, consistently is not the best thing, but trust me, they can handle it. These guys here will go inside the house for one more year. They'll probably spend one more year inside the house for the winter. The next year, they'll be in that enclosure right there with the adults. The Testudo, though, so my Hermans and Marginated are going to go in that enclosure right there for the winter and the greeks 
these guys right here will be going right in this enclosure. This is the same setup I had for the adults last year. So the adults actually broom in in this box. Uh, I built a little ramp for the thing to get into. I fill that with hay. Uh, there's a heat pad in there, which doesn't keep it really above 50 degrees at all. Um, but they can also dig down over there. This door closes. This is just extra wood sitting here. This door closes so it separates and just keeps them in this one area. The Hermans and the marginated. Oh, there's that one. She's right there. She's in quarantine now, but she'll be, she'll be roommating outside. The juveniles, though, will be in this enclosure, so it's nice and long. They have this high box here, um, and they'll be good to go. Uh, whether or not they actually roommate, it's up to them. I don't force them to, uh, but we do provide some heat. Not a lot of heat, but a little bit of heat there and there. But the adults won't have the benefit of that heat, but they will have the benefit of me being ultra paranoid to make sure that they're okay. Um, during the winter and to make sure that no extremes negatively impact them. Isn't she pretty? So as we go along, you know, you see a lot of this stuff hanging down. I installed a sprinkler system and these are actually little spikes that go into plants, uh, plant pots. So you'll see it's a little disheveled right now. So this is just kind of hanging here. So once I get the plants up on the shelves and the benches up here, then, uh, you know, this will all make more sense, but it looks a little disheveled. And that's okay, because there's nothing really in here. Oh, and there's Brutus. He likes to fight with the other red boats. We'll see if we can get him out of that. And I always have an audience. All right, so that's the basic structure of the pole frames, just two by sixes. I got a little opening down there that I can close off with another board. I can just put it on top of it if I have to. Um, this is obviously not done. I still got to do the lid. And I'm going to angle that lid a little bit down that way so uh, rainwater can come off. And this is really how I'm doing it. I'm just taking a small little trench, maybe an inch and a half, two inches. I level these boards out and uh, just build them up. It's all two by sixes and pretty easy, straightforward stuff. So this one will be for the Herman tortoises. And this one will be for the Greek tortoises. And that wall there obviously separates them so they're not connected. So we're about 90% done. And really, these are just lids. You just hinge and come up. One there. One there, so we can get to them. Just gotta put the glass on top, seal it up, that fill with some soil, and we're good. All right, so we're done. The glass is on. Well, the plexiglass is on. Little screws all around with some silicone to kind of seal it in there. These lift up. One of the Hermans is already in there. That's Petunia leaving. I put a little cheap hide thing in there so they can crawl under it and get some darkness. All right, Greek side, same exact thing. I just got to build a little hide for them out of scrap wood. But we backfilled with organic potting soil on both of them. They're solid. I like it. All right, so the next thing we got to do is start looking at our trees and see if anything can be done to them right now. It's still a little too early to start any major work on the trees to get them inside for the winter. But what we can do is like these tall ones, like the Brazilian rain tree, um, and that plate is over there, and a couple along the back there. We can start making them, like bringing them down. So they fit in here nicely. So you can tell uh, nothing's ready to come in here. So it's still a little disheveled and it's been a couple of weeks since I uh, taped that last part with the hole frames. But I only have a limited amount of, of room between the the, 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 the the shelf here and the ceiling. So and obviously that, that kind of is lower towards the back. So my highest distance is maybe two and a half, three feet on the shelf. So some trees will stay on the floor down there or back here. Uh, and then they'll have about five or six feet to grow, but others got to fit on, on this shelf here. So that's what I want to do today. Uh, kind of trim back some trees and see what we got to see. This Brazilian rain tree, this was uh, grown from basically a stick, maybe as thick as this. And I have it in this bigger pot here to help thicken that base and thicken the, the uh, trunk. So it's got a couple years probably left to go in the, a pot this size, 
But in the meantime, since I'm growing it tall, why waste them? So I'm actually air layering a lot of them. There's roots. So what we can do is we can snap them off and pot these up as new trees. I want to cut it back a little further. Let's go right here. Oh, that fell. We have roots. That'll feed that tree. Probably could let this go a little bit longer, but I really want to get stuff done. Real easy process. We're going to take this here and we're going to pot it in there. And all I'm using here is regular old organic potting soil. I'm sure there's other stuff you can use, but why complicate things if you don't have to? Those roots are going to be a little bit fragile, so you don't want to push down too hard. And since it doesn't have really any roots or anything kind of to grip onto, you might want to consider, if you ever want to do this, you might want to consider um, putting a stick in there and kind of tying it off to a stick to kind of support it until it grows its own roots to kind of grip onto itself. All right, new tree, got two more to do. Three new trees. I'm gonna go ahead and clip all these back a little bit too. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut these back to the last leaf. So you can see this branch doesn't have any leaves on it until here, but it's got a bunch more here. I'm gonna cut this one back right there. That'll probably die back, but that leaf will keep that branch going. And that tree will bud back and whatever. So that's definitely not anything like a style bonsai. It's got a couple of year or two to kind of get back to where it needs to be. But we're going for health here and to try to get this tree started where it needs to go. These guys will stay in the greenhouse um, just to keep them protected from, you know, any kind of extreme temperatures. We don't have any yet. It's still really nice out. Um, but uh, just uh, because they need to recover, um, we'll keep them in the greenhouse. Um, for the rest of uh, till next spring. So the rest of this tree is good and I want that height actually. So I'm probably gonna let, let the rest of it go kind of crazy. I don't really need to trim it because the height of this tree isn't gonna really be a big deal where I'm putting it. So um, that one's good. This one will go on the floor as well. This is actually a cutting, believe it or not. It's awesome you can make cuttings out of ficus. This is a cutting here from that tree right there that used to be the top of that tree so i'm just growing this out to see what i make of it but when you're looking for thickness you want to grow them really tall really high i'm not looking for thickness on here eventually what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut this off probably you know about here and root that and this will be one tree and then this main branch here and this will form this next tree so what that also means is i can cut this back to next to nothing and let this ramify So I said in the past that, you know, if you want to grow really thick branches, you want to kind of grow them way out and then cut back, way out, come back. And I cut all these back because this part here, if you can envision it, will be a tree probably from about here up. And then I'll have branches that are in balance with the tree. I don't want super thick branches up here if the tree's only that tall and the, the nabari comes to about here. So that'll be a cutting right there that I'll make one day. Not this day, but one day. And then the, the next tree from about here down will be this tree. And I gotta make sure this Navari gets to where it needs to be. Next year I'll repot that and take a look at what the roots look like, um, but not right now. And you can see I left a couple leaves on these branches here just to make sure that they, these two stay alive, which they probably would anyway. And I left the bud tips on these because this branch I do wanna get thicker and maybe even this branch, but I don't have many branches down here once I cut this back, this will burst with branches, but these two I want to preserve because that's all I have down there for the next tree. And I don't know where they would go. Maybe that would be the top branch right there. And this would be the first side branch, but that's years down the line. Anyway, that's done. This one goes back outside. Right there in full sun, so it can bud back before it goes in the greenhouse. Okay, and right here, this bush right here, is actually a narrow leaf buttonwood with an excellent nabari. I got this tree, I think, last spring from Weigert's Bonsai. Um, 
and uh, I don't really like to mess with the more sensitive trees too much the first year, so I give it time to settle in and get used to the climate. Especially buttonwoods for me, I find buttonwoods to be a little bit more sensitive than other trees, at least either for me, either that's just a me thing, or it's just where I live because they're not from here, they're more of a, a warm climate tree. Anyway, so this tree has good branching inside. Um, it's got a really cool looking nabari. Uh, but like I said, we're not working this tree much. And I think the branching inside looks relatively thick. So this tree has to stay on the bench, but I want to shorten it just to make sure it fits there. And then what I'll have it next summer, probably late spring, early summer, once the heat comes back, then I'll pot this up into a real bonsai pot uh, in style and do a real ramification, but, uh, or a real, uh, real styling. Um, but for right now, we're not worried too much about the style. We just want to make sure it fits in the greenhouse and stays alive. So I'm just going to cut it back. I'm not the full lady. So no real styling, like I said, but it's lower. It'll fit between the ceiling height and there, and then I can kind of let it grow back. Late spring, summer, once warm temperatures come back next year, we'll totally defoliate this. We'll take all the old soil out, replace it with good bonsai soil, put it in a good bonsai pot, and go from there. I don't know what kind of fertilizer this is, but this is that this blue stuff. I don't think it's a natural organic fertilizer. So when I repot this thing, I want to make sure I get all that old fertilizer off of there. This came from the nursery. That's a weed. But this is what the nursery uses. Um, so a lot of times what I will do is I'll take these weeds that grow in here and I'll feed them to the tortoises. But if it has this kind of fertilizer in it, I don't like to. The amount of fertilizer in here, if I fed the weeds to the tortoises, probably wouldn't hurt them. But at the same time, I don't like um, feeding them things from chemically based fertilizers. I just don't think that it will have a good outcome long term. That's why I don't use chemical based fertilizers. And that's why I try to make sure that they don't ingest any unnatural things. All right, so that's good. It's pretty cool Nabari. I can't wait to see what this looks like down below. I haven't, I haven't obviously I haven't bare rooted this thing yet, um, but from what I can see, I'm gonna have fun with this. I'd like to be able to kind of get it where it's not an informal upright, where I can kind of put it on its side, but I'm not sure if this Nabari will let me do that. Either way, the Nabari is cool. We've got some other wood sticking up here. So I'm interested to see what is down there that I can play with. So anyway, narrow leaf, button wood, pretty cool. This goes back outside. And bring it back inside in a few weeks. Okay, next tree is that tree. Another willow leaf ficus with an oak leaf in it. Um, so you can see I'm growing this tree tall, not because I want height, because I'm trying to get use this as a sacrifice branch to thicken this trunk up, which has an ant infestation. Hmm. But anyway, uh, you can see my handy dandy recycled planner that this was a bougainvillea at one time. Um, anyway, and the roots broke through the pot. So I'm gonna repot this. I'm just gonna slip pot it. This will, this is actually over a rock. Um, so, you know, this will be a root over a rock one day. This will be where I do my styling, and this here will be cut off right there, which will eventually become a new tree. So this here is just to get, this is just a sacrifice branch. So I'm gonna cut that back a little bit, just so I get more height. Um, probably prune this back, just shave it. I'm not gonna do any st real styling. I'm gonna repot that as well. Probably just put it in some potting soil. You can see I have an ant colony in there. Let me get the hose. Cool thing about having a greenhouse, is you don't have to move a tree. That'll do it. Okay, so I'm gonna just put this in this nursery pot here. Um, and I'm gonna just use regular potting soil. I really wanna get these roots kind of nice and wrapped around that rock, which I can show you. There's the rock, there's the roots. It is kind of on the rock. Um, so it looks good-ish, get rid of that weed. Um, but I really want these to thicken a little bit. So I think if I put it in a nice big nursery pot, it'll give these more room to kind of grow and expand and stuff. And actually might make this a little bit better and help thicken this up a little bit more too. 
So I'm not burying it all the way in this pot. You can see it's a little low there. It'll actually give the shaded area here, where it's kind of below the soil line, might uh, give me more area to reach down here. Uh, but I don't really need all this depth. So I'm not using the whole pot. I could trim this, but I just don't feel like it. Uh, so I'm just gonna backfill all the edges here. Can you ask why I'm not using bonsai soil? Um, is because I don't think you have to. Um, bonsai soil is for more aeration and to grow and enhance the tree's ability to ramify its roots. And I'm not really looking for ramification right now. I'm actually looking for root growth in terms of thickness. To wrap around that, that uh, rock a little bit better. And I'm really looking to grow the thickness of the trunk. That's the number two goal. Um, where, so bonsai soil, while it is like an ideal soil for when it's in a bonsai pot, um, I don't think you need it for this. Plus bonsai soil is more expensive than regular organic potting soil, so why use it if you don't have to? All right, so there's that. This right now could make up just a fine bonsai. It's got a phenomenal nabari. It is a rock that you can't see. Um, it's got an okay size trunk and the shape is good, but I want something a little bit better. I'll probably keep something like this shape on here because the focal point of this tree eventually won't be this. It'll be the Nabari over the rock. So the interest doesn't have to be here. If I find that I have branches that make it really cool and interesting, that's a, that's a bonus, but it doesn't have to be here. The, the, the interest should be down here, but we'll see. And then obviously this will go by the wayside. This will probably, I'll probably end up making this its own tree. So that's that, that goes back on the bench for now. And so it's time to bring it in for the wintertime.